We are watching Beauty and the Geek, episode three, reality show from 2005, where they got a bunch of geeks and a bunch of beauties of women, because beauties can be guys too, but these, in this case, they're women, and they put them in house together and see if they can break stereotypes by enforcing stereotypes. We have done episode one and two. We are on episode three, and that's what we're gonna get into today. Hello, YouTube. You got a YouTube Snapchat filter? Oh, you know we do. Oh, guys, this is gonna be a great video today. What's up, guys? I feel like I wanna make like a YouTube apology video in here. I've made a severe. <laughs> this is gonna be a great video today. It's gonna be dope. All right, let's do it. Here we go. The geeks attempted to pass their brains onto the beauties. I really hope this show cuts the bullshit with this goddamn trivia, because I'm exposing myself every episode as being not that smart. Brad, what is the body's largest organ with over 5,000 sensory points? My penis. I don't enjoy that. I think I'm kind of known as kind of a genius when I get to edit videos and script ahead of time, so I don't enjoy this part of the show, but cut the bullshit, all right? Please don't do it, please don't do it. In the challenges, the women learned auto maintenance. I broke a nail, and I got my pants dirty. I'm dirty. And were tested on their fifth grade knowledge. While the guys learn how to dance. It is trauma dump night, And seems. how to give a woman a massage. Yeah, this is great. Yeah. Each week, the winners of the challenges pick two teams to go to the elimination room. And each week, one team was sent home. We're like the geeks, and these chicks are supposed to be stupid blondes. But what it comes down to is everyone's just, you know, everyone's just people. I just realized, like, how superficial. Girls that look like us can treat guys who look like some of them. Oh, God, they're guys. learning. Now only five teams remain, all in the quest to become more than just the beauty and the geek. All right, baby. I was relieved after we were not eliminated. It is a shot at a lot of money, but at the same time, it's a shot at a big opportunity just to be here with people and experience new things. Go at it. <laughs> I think at first it was more about the money. Now it's to me is changing a little bit more and it's becoming more about who we are as people. It's more about growing and learning from this experience. Oh, there's such a crush on Richard. I love the little kid. Like, he's like so cute. You're trying to pick him up and eat him. Like, he's the cutest thing in the world. No, no, no. Tango's like this, right? Now, oh, no, where do you, <laughs> Kylan, where do, you, where do you hold, right? On the bum. On the bum. This is the bum. That's the bum. This is the bum, like that. <laughs> This is a first. This is huge. And this isn't even for a challenge. This isn't even for a challenge. This is just regular old mingling. Wow. Bad touch. You get ass? Let's see how you grab ass. Riz churd. <laughs> I'm not sure that one works. All right, what do we got today in the house, baby? No one right now that I have a one in five chance of winning a quarter of a million dollars. It's scary, but it's also exciting at the same time. It's extremely important that we win this next challenge. Good morning. Good morning. In the last challenge, both competitions were swept by a single team. The second time in a row, and this time it was, it was Chuck and Keitelin. But now the power to control who goes to the elimination room is up for grabs. In the next challenge, you'll be competing in activities that are foreign to both of you. Guys, you'll be learning all about women's fashion. Wait, why is that foreign to both of them? <laughs> Don't worry, it's not rocket science. <laughs> oh, nice one, host. Yeah, slip that little geek joke in there, nice. Ladies, you on the other hand will be learning. Oh no. Ah, see, this is why the snap cam is a risk sometimes. Sometimes we just lose the fucking camera. Hold on, give me a sec, I'll be right back. No, there it is, I'm back. All right, continue. Rocket science. <laughs> I was like completely floored because that is like so boring. No. Oh wait, cool. did he say it's not rocket science, guys? Girls, you're learning rocket science? <laughs> kind of like that, kind of smooth. Ladies, you on the other hand will be learning rocket science. Nice. <laughs> I was like completely floored because that is like so boring. And like, I have no clue about rocket science. That's Does right. anybody? Your materials will teach you how to construct a functional rocket. Remember, winning these challenges will not only ensure your stay in this house, but will also give you the opportunity to choose one of the teams that will face off in the elimination room. So I suggest you study very, very hard with your partners. Goodbye. 
I mean, they're acting like that's a big, complicated thing. That's really just going to be like a camp activity, you know? They'll build a little rocket, a little mini rocket. They're going to give them all the materials and everything. It's going to be fine. It's going to be okay. We've, we've been given two study materials. We have a, a book sort of about planning one's wardrobe, and then we have a magazine about fashion. Who manufactures this bag? Louis Vuitton. LV. Louis Vuitton. Where's the LV? Right here. There's the L and the V. That's like Louis yeah. Vuitton. Like, Hold on, let me see that. Are you sure that's not Super Bowl 50, 55? Did I get my Roman numerals right there? Looking in the mirror, how does your bust line look? Are you wearing a knit top? Kind of a flirty little setup here. I hate to say it, but Richard, Richard is killing it. I mean, last time he was touching bum, grabbing bum, and now he's kind of like a cute little, like, clueless, on the bed, studying together. I don't know. Richard might just be real. I think fashion is, is frivolous and uh, rather read about the gospel according to Luke. You have particularly <laughs> stubborn nipples. Mindy. Christian man. One trick is to cover them with a Band-Aid. I'm serious. I, I know, I know this already. Horizon not low. <laughs> How are we gonna build a freaking rocket? <laughs> this stuff here is slow burning, and this is the time delay. And then right here is a small explosive charge, right? So, launch. The recovery device, which is a parachute. Okay, uh, apparently every single guy here knows rockets. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely think that people have judged me on my looks, and I'll be honest, I've never ever in my life felt like I was smart. I want to be honest here, I've never judged her for her looks, I've only judged her for her name. Kindly, still not over it. You get three vowels, all right? You get three vowels in your name, you're asking for too many. You are fishing. I'm using this to prove to myself that, that I'm not stupid and I'm always open to learning new things and to challenging myself, that feels good. I'm with that though, that is how you should look at life. If you don't know some things, that's fine. Just be open to learning and don't let people make fun of you for not knowing things like people probably did in the last two episodes about me. We all learn when we get there. I hate studying, like I don't like to study at all. <gasps> oh my God, what? <laughs> the last time he was studying, what the fuck? That is what I think about wrong. That is waste. Coming up next, the geek's fashion IQ is put to the test. Is this the butt floss? Can I ask your, your measurement? Well, the beauties must put themselves on the line. The butt was so big. I really felt like I was watching. Classic show. I think we saw the trailer announcement for this last time. We were like, oh, that's funny. The guys have to learn fashion advice, but the girls got to wear it. And for the rocket stuff, it's just like, you just got to make rockets, chicks. The guys will just stand there. I feel like we should make it even. Uh, you know, me, Gunner, a feminist. I think for the rocket challenge, you should fire the rocket at the guy or um, or maybe he rides the rocket. I'm workshopping it, but there's a way to make this fair. I'm an ally, baby. Really it's got a feminist filter on here. We got something that shows my allyship. Be it. Hey, guys, be it. You know, this graphic might actually make you want to be a misogynist. This is so shitty. This actually makes me hate women. And this one puts makeup on me. What does it say? To me, feminism is about justice. It's about equality and freedom. Those are my words, by the way. What the hell is this one? I got a whole dissertation on my face. Yeah, okay, we need better feminists making Snapchat filters because these ones suck. Welcome to the first part of today's challenge. Yesterday, you were given materials related to rocketry. Well, in this competition, we're gonna test you on how much you learned because each of you will have to build a rocket and successfully launch it above that red line. First person that sends her rocket soaring into the sky. Well, learning about rockets is one thing. Putting together the rocket, I feel like you need some practice, a little bit of help. That's a whole other thing. Host that's dressed like a Russian mob boss. Send one team to the elimination room and ensures that she and her partner will be safe for the next few days. So ladies, you ready? Yes. Man your goggles. When I saw the goggles, I didn't want to wear them because they're ugly and big. They're not fashionable for me. Five, four, three, two, one, go! How does it go? Wait, like this. Kite ran into a, a little bit of trouble just out of the gate but with the figuring out how to attach the fins. Doing great. Don't start, Brad. Don't fucking start, Brad. I'm sick of your shit. Doing, keep it up. Doing good. Shut the fuck up, Brad. I know how to build a rocket. Lauren looking completely clueless. I don't know how to build a rocket. Crystal pulling way ahead. She's already onto the rocket. 
Wow, you are kicking everybody's ass. Okay, I don't know how we're supposed to put this together. How are you? They're taping them. Model rocketry is called miniature astronautics. That's not helpful, Richard. That is literally not helpful whatsoever in this situation. Crystal and Kyle and neck and neck. These rockets are looking a little phallic. I guess most rockets do. Maybe I have the problem. Still a feminist. Is there gonna be crystal? Oh my god! Hi, check. Do we hit the red line? You bring an official for that one. Yes! Holy fuck! Bravo. So I just cranked it up, shook it, and bam, the <laughs> thing went off. I was just shocked, excited. Congratulations, Kyle and Crystal. Yours successfully launched first, but it didn't go anywhere. I'm disappointed in myself. You guys have won three challenges in a row. This is the team to beat right here. And I might complain about having to read about the different parts of the rocket model, but when I walk out of here, I'm gonna feel better than I did the day I walked in. She crushed it, and you know what it was? It was her mentality. She said it earlier, I'm stupid, I don't know everything, but I'm ready to learn. And just like that, she did a good job. None of us really had much of an idea what was going on, and then they told us we were needed downstairs. Gentlemen, part of your reason for being here is to open up to women so that they can learn what you're all about. Okay. Now the question is, how much have you paid attention to the things that matter to your partner? Do you know her favorite color? Her style? You know what? I hate this one. I hate this one. This whole, do you know your partner? What's their favorite color? Oh, who the fuck knows their partner's favorite color? I'm not even sure I know my favorite color half the time because I think it changes bi-weekly. And I know if I had a partner, I'm sure theirs would too. Unless they're one of those weird people that won't shut the fuck up about their favorite color, which those people do exist for sure. Sending you to a clothing store where you'll have to pick out three different outfits for your teammate. You'll need to take all of your newfound knowledge of fashion and combine it with everything you've learned about your partner in order to succeed. Okay. With that in mind, have fun shopping, fellas. It felt like being back in school and having a test, and I haven't studied enough for it. I kind of like, please make it work, okay? Please give me a passing grade. <laughs> Guys and I took a road trip into Beverly Hills. I've never bought clothes for a girl before. Hi there. No, me neither. I just don't take the risk. You know, that shit's scary. I don't like buying clothes for people in general. I don't know sizes very well. I really don't know sizes. Okay, anything catch your eye? Like a Hawaiian type suit. What about you guys? You don't sell thongs. <laughs> we do? It's called butt floss, I believe. Okay. Whoa, Richard. Richard asked, you got thongs? He's got to buy a bathing suit, bro. You're all lingerie shopping. That's right over here. Let me take a look at that. Is this the butt floss? There you go. Oh, Double. This is like a floss. Keep it going. Keep it going. I don't think they heard you the first time, Richard. Say it a little bit louder for the whole store, actually. Can I ask you what your measurements are? Just as something to like ballpark off of? Okay. Uh, better ways to ask for help. Better ways to ask for help on measurements than that. Do you know what size she is? I have no idea. You have no idea. No. Animal, uh, an animal print. An an what kind of animal? A tigress? If you had to rate them on a sort of hotness spectrum, this would be a little bit. I want hot. I want sexy. I want attractive. This is what's happening, this thing. It's an animal print. It's like a leopard print. Cheetah. Do the butt floss joke again. Come on. Or whatever it is. It's like Tarzan. She looks like Jane. I don't know how about size. Need the size and she's what size? She's She's like a female version of me. <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> Her body type is my body type. <laughs> see all this? You see all this and how hot this is? That's pretty much her. Yep. Fine. Uh, oh my God. I was very excited because by the time we got to the second store, I'd already planned out uh, in my mind what I wanted to do. What I was thinking for the casual is immediately ask the woman employee what her size is and if you can use her as reference. That's your first move. Maybe like a, um, a sort of finished sweater in a, in a sort of a, like a, a dark purplish pink. Yeah, can I get a, can I get one of those sweaters that's just kind of like see-through? You know, like I get one of those sweaters where you just kind of like see someone's areola and nipples, something like that. And if this is too personal, but can, can I ask your your measurements? The thing that really I motherfucker was Chuck, about. stop that shit, Chuck. We loved you on the last episode. You gotta cut that shit out, man. <laughs> that is a weird question. Stop doing that to people. The thing that really I was nervous about was the sizing. I mean, I thought to myself, if I get this too small, she can't wear it. Game over. Good luck, you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll need it. <laughs> <laughs> 
This is actually very, very mean to the women. <laughs> if they didn't talk about sizes before this, then yeah, some of them are going to have way too small bathing suits and some of them are going to have wickedly large shit that makes them it look stupid. Like picking out the type of clothes and like what your fashion sense is is one thing, but they should have had the guys equipped with the sizes before they went out. A six or a... I asked for a six-year-old bathing suit. No? Oh, shit. I messed up. You wear four, don't you? No. What do you wear, two? Um, See, I'm another thing I don't know. Numbers for the ba- Oh, uh, whatever. I don't fucking- Four, six? What? You're a zero. I don't know what a zero means. A zero means you don't exist. I thought that two would be the smallest. Facts. Holy shit. Me and Richard are the same person right now. <laughs> Sean, what did you get? I don't want to talk about it. Why? This was a traumatizing experience. Why? <laughs> I second guess myself on a regular basis and going through this process made it that much worse because you know, I really wasn't sure exactly what would fit and how it would look and I'm paranoid. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be. You know what? Whatever you did, I'm sure it's absolutely great. You're not the fucker that has to wear it, so it's okay. You need to be confident about everything. I love Sean. He's such a quiet guy. If somebody could just break past that point. He, he'd be amazing. He just needs a little bit of confidence. Oh, sounds like you want to break past that. All right. Somebody breaks past it. And this goes that I was going to say it goes to the next room and someone's just absolutely plowing the other person. <laughs> But doing a massage, whoa, Chuck and Scarlett. Should we be watching this? Oh my gosh. Is that a good oh my gosh? Or? Yeah, that's a good one. I was feeling really stressed out. My back was hurting. I just had a lot of pressure and a lot of stress. I just asked Chuck to give me a massage. I think he gives an incredible massage. Okay. Okay. Can I slide these off your shoulders for a second? Yeah. Quick, get her measurement, get her measurement. Now that they're off, get her measurement. This is a little set up. He had the massage oil ready? Oh my God. We do have some things in common. We actually started talking in Spanish. Has tenido novia? Does that mean, have I? Yeah, have you? Yeah, of course. He's definitely an intelligent. I mean, that could have meant anything. He didn't really say the rest of the words. It could mean anything. I think it's very attractive. Has tenido una novia latina? No. After the massage, Chuck said that he wanted to talk to me. I'm not very good at She is hella flirting right now. That is a flirtatious as fuck line. Assuming she's Latin. It'd be kind of weird if she wasn't. If she wasn't Latin, that line might be insinuating something else, but I'm pretty sure she is. Flirtatious line right there. Sort of expressing myself sometimes. Yes, you are. Well, I mean, yes, you are. You're very good at expressing I told myself from the very beginning that I was going to use this experience as a way to spend a little time outside of my comfort zone. And I just, I think you're the most beautiful woman in the house. Uh, no, I mean, that's sweet. There are five women. There are a total of five women, but that is very sweet, you know? I thought he was going to say, like, in the world. But I guess that would be kind of weird. It's like day three, but, you know, you're the most beautiful Latin woman in the house. I don't think I've ever gone out with a guy like Chuck. He's attractive, but kind of like in a different nerdy way. I mean, I know we don't have a lot of time, but... Um... I just, I would, I'd like to spend some of it with you. Thank you. I've already taken a couple of risks here that, that I, I wouldn't normally be used to taking. I guess in some sense, the old me would have been willing to live in the house for two weeks and, and sort of never tell- Bum touch, bum touch, bum touch alert. Camera in, you got that? Zoom in on that shit. Scarlett, what a special person I, I think she is. Just a little- was a little bum scratch almost. Guys, yesterday you went shopping for women's clothing. You picked out three types of outfits for your ladies, evening wear, casual wear, and swimsuits. Now we're gonna find out how much you learned about fashion and your partner's sense of style because your teammate will be modeling fits. That cut out. Will be modeling fits. The hell slur did you just say, host? I sometimes struggle with confidence when it comes to like a bathing suit anyways. And so to know that not only was I going to have to be in one, but I was going to have to shake what my mother gave me all the way down and all the way back. I was <laughs> Well, if she's being so modest, I know she throws that in. God, uh, to think I was going to have to walk and uh, shake that thing up and down and throw that shit back. <sighs> kind of a little nerve wracking. 
And to judge how well you've done, we've brought in some fashion experts. Please say hello to Nani Tochterman. Yeah, I ain't taking any of this woman's advice on fashion. Nope, I ain't doing it. I ain't doing it. Don't trust it. I don't trust the golden girl with pink hair. Not happening. Celebrity stylist Todd Hallman, who's worked with Owen Wilson. Okay, that, I trust this look for sure. <laughs> the gray goatee, yeah, I love it. Jewelry designer Erica Corden. Sure. <laughs> sure, why not? Yeah, I mean, she could. They'll decide who wins this challenge based on who picked out the best wardrobe for their teammate. So take Thanks, some time sir. backstage to get ready. And then, ladies, it's time to stretch your stuff on the catwalk. Surprise. Oh, cute. That, that's your evening wear. This is really cute. So Bill came in the dressing room before the show started, and he showed me uh, my dress, then my casual wear, and then my bathing suit. I thought he did an excellent job. I was like, oh my god, we're going to win this. This is the bathing Oh, no. I love okay. that accent. Well, the rear's a little tiny, but I think I can make that work. OK. Oh, uh, the, don't forget the flower, the Hawaiian effect. Is that, that was for, very, for the hair? Yes, for okay. casual. That was very, that was very crucial. That was very okay. crucial. Can't Thanks forget the flower. That is very, very crucial. When I first saw the clothes, I noticed that the sizes, they were actually the sizes that, you know, that I wear. So I was very excited. I was like, yes, they're definitely going to fit perfect. All right, yeah. kick some ass. Nice. Do we have the same thing? Thing on. When I put the green dress on, I see that Lauren has the exact same dress in a different color. What the fuck? What the fuck? This is some drama. And hers fits her, and mine is two sizes too big. <laughs> it looks like a Christmas tree. The guys were really nervous about this challenge just because we weren't the ones who were really on the line. I mean, this was a challenge where we really ended up putting our partners on the line because they were the ones who were actually going to be looked at. Yep, which is why you should have got their sizes right before you went shopping. <laughs> it fits. He got my sizes perfect. He nailed everything like right on the target. I don't know anything about dress fitting or whatever. Honestly, it, it feels like the green dress fits too. Does that not fit? This is two sizes bigger. It looks like it fits. Maybe it's supposed to be a short dress. I don't know. I was watching Mindy walk down the runway and I was very proud. Oh, look at him her. hyping her up. Wow, she looks mighty fine. Richard goes back and forth, man. He really does. What did he do to piss me off again? Oh, yeah, he got in her face after the dancing competition. I'm angry. We went through a lot of time like that. Maybe I just got a little complacent there. Maybe, you know, you won the immunity round. I mean... Uh oh. Quickly went from the favorite to the least favorite that quickly, dude. Yeah, he's won me back, though. He's won me back pretty fast. When I first got up the stairs, I thought to myself, you know what, if I want to win this... Right, Scarlet looks great. Awesome. It might have something to do with me just seeing her getting massaged in her back and in bed, but I think she looks great, all right? Is that what you're supposed to wear over it? <coughs> yeah, and don't laugh because I don't want my partner's feelings to get hurt when he sees this. I'm about to hit... I love Mindy, dude. Mindy's sweet. She's my favorite so far. Winning the rock competition, good attitude, protecting Richard's feelings. Very nice. I'm feeling really just insecure about what I'm wearing. <laughs> the pink dress was too big and too poofy. See, I'm a fucking idiot because I would be like, looks fine. Chuck has an extremely high IQ, but his fashion IQ is probably like a three on a scale of one to 100. The next thing was the casual wear, which he got me a white skirt and then a, a turquoise and white top. I felt like I did a pretty good job. The casual wear fit her perfectly. The brown corduroys were about two sizes too big and about six inches too long. And then the whole layered... I mean, I don't know what to say. It looks good. I got nothing to say about this whole segment here. Very 2000s, I guess. So that she did. The bathing suit was a Brazilian cut bathing suit, which is kind of little in the back. The size, it fit perfect, and I was definitely confident. You know what? No, I think I get it now. No, I think I get fashion now. Yep. Yep. The swimwear, the butt. Not is weird. So big. Oh, I, feminism. I really felt like I was walking around. It's not weird if I wear a feminist banner. Well, like, look at it. Because it was just like sagging. I mean, I was not comfortable. You look great. Wearing that swimsuit at all. I don't care. You look great. Yes. 
seeing her walking up and Go, down. sister. So, you know, there, there's a certain arousal factor. I thought the outfit looked very sexy. That's a little creepier than me. There's a certain arousal factor. Yeah, I'm getting a certain arousal factor here. Getting an arousal factor of 27 here. And my biggest fear definitely is that my boobs are going to come flying out of my clothes. They were too big and the bathing suit was too small. Expecting. I don't feel comfortable in a swimsuit anyways. And the bikini was just like three sizes too small. It barely covered any part of my body. I wanted it over with immediately. Stop it. Why are we doing slow-mo? Stop. Gentlemen, why don't you come stand with your respected ladies? As far as the actual competition part of the challenge, all I knew was that, you know, I'd, I'd gotten lucky on, on the sizing and that, that I'd gotten stuff that I knew Kite liked. I felt very happy about the challenge. Cameramen are so weird in this show sometimes. Yeah, we got the shot. Yeah, we got the shot. The judges have made their final decision. And before I tell you, I know they've got something they want to say to you men. We'll start with Todd. Go ahead, Todd. Richard, obviously you're a Flintstones fan because <laughs> the Bam Bam thing, the, the little Actually, leopard. Actually, I just wanted to bring out the animal in her. <laughs> oh, Richard kills it every time. Oh, he's quick-witted and funny. We like the evening dress. That was a great dress, Bill. Sean, shoes were great with all the outfits. She looked confident. She looked good. I think we all, like, did we agree, like, the evening, the black just didn't fit very well. Chuck, no. I just wondered, Kaitlyn is so beautiful. I questioned if you even liked her. <laughs> Whoa, Todd. I vouched for you in the beginning, dude. All right? I vouched for you as a fashion critique. If he even liked her, they don't know what the fuck they're doing. Trying to instill a little drama in there, Todd. Where do you get off? The little prom number for the evening. Like the black and the pink and the poofy and the sparkle, that was a little too, too much. And none of it really fit her well. It's like, I don't think you were observant enough to see her real size. She didn't feel comfortable in any of the clothes we didn't think. Listen, Betty White, you don't look very... Hold your tongue, Gunner. Hold your tongue. No, I know he did his best and I'm so appreciative and I know he had my best interest in mind. Well, gentlemen, the votes are in. Todd, which guy has the highest score? My highest score is Sean. Sean. I mean, you saw me back there, and I think I agree. Erica. I have to say Sean. Nani. Sean. Wow. <laughs> Congratulations, Sean and Scarlett. I found out that Scarlett and I won, and I was, my jaw hit the floor. I was, I was shocked. Congratulations, Light, Kaitlyn, and Chuck. You guys are safe from elimination. And you also get to choose one team that will face off in the elimination room. There were a couple things about some of Scarlett's outfits that I had noticed, that I had kind of locked onto, stuff that I wanted to emphasize, and... Uh, take away the win. Can we revoke the win? Can we give him second place instead? I don't like his victory speech. He won the competition because he's creepy. <laughs> <laughs> My strategy? Well, he's got nice tits, so I wanted to accentuate them, you know. I was really happy that Sean and Scarlett won the challenge. It means that they're both safe, and I'm very glad about that. So glad yeah. to see you guys. I'm so glad you're safe. Oh, I keep getting confused. So Chuck isn't even with Scarlett as his couple, so he doesn't want to lose her, so he's happy that their couple stayed. Okay, all right. I assumed everyone was with their couple. Congrats! I have no permanent alliances, and whoever wins the immunity is my new best friend. What's uh, what's going on here? What's on his nose? My friend, my pal, my bud, Sean. You're Sean, trying to form alliances, aren't you? <laughs> There's no alliance forming going on. There was nothing subtle about that at all. It was very obvious that he was, you know, trying to, you know, get on my good side. I'm coming out saying I want to form an alliance. Keeps doing it's this. Gonna... Chuck, you want to play some chess? Uh, I was gonna play with Scarlet actually. Okay. The thing Dude about Richard is, five is years it's old. much easier to be laughed at for being the buffoon than it is to be laughed at for being yourself. I feel like him and Chuck just made up last episode for this exact thing. He's right back to doing it again. It was just a disheartening day because I really thought Rich was moving in the right direction. And, and he wasn't. Just walking around with the nail savers and the hat. And... I'm over it. It's old. I think I'm number one on Chuck's hit list. 
Richard, don't intentionally try to piss someone off. It's too off. late. I am, he, he and I are like, we are beyond the point of no return. Well, that's definitely going to be the first thing that's going to send us to an elimination room. I think that Richard is a liability. He just completely runs around like an idiot. His actions reflect on me. Well, showtime. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Is it showtime? Yes. Yes. Richard is somebody you can only get in short bursts, and then it becomes annoying. Maybe that's what happens. Every single time I come back to watch an episode on stream, I'm like, I love this guy, because I haven't seen him in over a week. And then as, as the episode goes, I'm like, I kind of hate this guy. <laughs> but I'm sure by next episode, I'll be like, I love this guy again. You got a micro dose, Richard. Straight face with the fucking hat. He came mean in business tonight. I know what Chuck's up to. If Chuck had his way, he'd eliminate me. If I had my way, I'd eliminate him. I'm scared out of my mind right now. I don't want to go home. Like, it really, really makes me nervous. Sean and Kaitlyn, in yesterday's challenge, you each gained the power to choose who would be headed to the elimination room tonight. It's time to reveal your decision. So, Kaitlyn, which team have you and your partner chosen? and I made this decision together and um, we chose Richard and Mindy. But we just really feel like- But since we've seen Richard walk in this room with his hat, we kind of think he means business. So we changed our answer. This house and this game is about life changing experiences. And we really felt like we were breaking through that wall with you, Richard, and getting down to the core of it and who you really are. And we just couldn't get through. So Richard and Mindy, you'll be going to the elimination room tonight. Sean, who have you and your teammate decided to put up for elimination tonight? Scarlett and I talked a lot about this. We feel that uh, one of you could use this experience more, which is why we are sending- Bro was ChatGBT before ChatGBT was invented. Brad and Crystal to the elimination room tonight. Brad and Crystal, you'll be facing off against Richard and Mindy in the elimination room tonight. You will be tested on astronomy and women's fashion, so I hope you guys are prepared. Take your time, pack your bags, and say your goodbyes. I'm rooting for Mindy and Richard just for Mindy. But then again, I kind of want the Chuck and Scarlett. Oh no, Chuck's a different guy. Yeah, send Brad and Crystal packing. I kind of do blame Richard for us going into the elimination room because Richard it isn't changing. Like, he's not being open to change. Nobody's fault. Richard, you're not a pain in the ass. Mwah. We love you. Mwah. Mwah. And one more for good luck. Mwah. Yeah. Mwah. All right. Yeah, I kind of want to be back. Best. I'm going to fail. No, you're not. I knew that I was going to have to study a lot more because I haven't done any of that. So I knew I'd have to go for a cram session. I have to show you how to spoon. OK, lay down. Oh, god. Yes. It was one of the first nights that we were here, and I told Richard that I would spoon him. Dude, Mindy's the best. <laughs> I want to be Mindy's partner, dude. What the fuck? Oh, she's the best. I'm, what does the spoon mean? And he's like, well, what's spooning? You're going to teach me how to spoon. Hey, lay on your side. Face that way. Scoot dude, over. Richard is just bumbling his way into these sexual situations. I, at this point, I think he might just be playing it up. What's bum? Uh, what? What is, is this bum? This his ass? What's spooning? What the frick is spooning? I wish somebody would show me what spooning is. I don't know what that is. We're we talking like silverware? I don't get it. I wish somebody would show me. I'm on to you, Richard. I'm on to your games. I'm taking notes too. They're kind of working. Important. What is edging? Oh, what the fuck is that? What is sex? What is butt sex? What the heck? 69? What? What is that? Richard found out what spooning was before we got to leave since we didn't know if we were going to see each other ever again. You have this to lay is, down. This is a lay down. You have to lay magical down. Magical moment. Lay. Lay down. This is spooning. And if you really see this is spooning. Oh, my like God. This. Oh, my Lord. I told her that maybe we should try to get eliminated more often. <laughs> See, he's even on to it. I Got really watching like my this parents. Time. Well, that's kind of weird. Time. That says more about you than me. I don't know what, how the hell you do that. If I'm on in your living room TV with your parents watching right now, change the channel. Put on Game of Thrones or, or Breaking Bad or whatever the, the kids are watching. I, what are you watching me for? 
sending me into the elimination room worse than they could have done. If I survive that elimination round, I'm coming back. I'm coming back with a vengeance and take no prisoners. Welcome to the elimination room. Tonight, I'm going to give each of you three questions that will test your knowledge that you've already learned over the past few days. The team that answers the most questions correctly will return to the house one step closer to $250,000. Forgot the about the team. money, I always do. I thought we were fighting for friendship. Ladies, you're gonna go first. Gentlemen, if you can wait across the hall in the viewing room. Good luck. We gotta lock in for Gunner to get some shit wrong. All right, trivia time chat, here we go. Mindy, you'll go first. I'm gonna go with two. Two. Mindy, your question is, how many times in one year does the Earth travel around the sun? One. One. I knew that too. Trust me. That is correct. Yes. The score is now 1-0 over to Crystal. Um, number three. Event called when the moon passes directly between the sun and the earth and casts a shadow on the earth's surface. I'm going to say uh, lunar eclipse, but what if it's solar eclipse? Mm, I'm going to lock in solar eclipse. A lunar eclipse? So close. It's incorrect. It's a solar eclipse. Oh, boy. Oh, got it with the solar eclipse. The score remains 1-0. Over to you, Mindy. Five. Mindy, what is the name of the famous comet that passes Earth every 76 years? We got one of those? What is that? We got aliens coming every 76 years? What comet passes by? There's a comet that keeps coming every every 76 years? Halley's Comet. What the hell? You might know what that is, but I wonder if you guys even know why that is. Why is that? It's just doing loop-de-loops? This is some bullshit. No, I've never heard of Halley's Comet in my life. Although I did know this flame called Halley before. <sighs> Haley's comment. That is correct. Yes. The score now is two questions to zero. They're not hitting tonight. And over to you, Crystal. Number one. Crystal, what star is closest to the Earth? Sun. Sun? Sun. You know that. Um, um is it me? I'm a star. I guess at this one, I'll say the sun. I have no idea. You are correct. So the score now is two to one. Mindy, from which state are the space shuttles launched? I have no idea. Where, uh, 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 starts with an N, right? Starts with an N? You guys saying Florida? It's Florida? I thought we were sending them out in the middle of uh, Nebraska. Uh, yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> sending out Florida. All right. Um, Florida. You know, that's smart, though. If we're sending our spaceships out of Florida, then when aliens find us, they'll probably go to Florida first, and we could lose that. That's correct. The score is now a three I think it's a questions purposeful to play one. by the government. One question remaining, and over to Crystal. Crystal, what planet is named after the Roman goddess of love? Mercury, baby. Although that might be Greek. Give it to me. Aphrodite. Mm, Should have known that. Uh, wait, Mercury's Roman. Greek is Aphrodite. So I am right. I am right, as I've always been. It's Venus. What? Shit. What does Mercury equal? Mercury is Minerva. Ah, fuck me. Aphrodite, Venus. I'm your Venus. I'm your fire, pure desire. See, I should have known that. Let's see. I'm gonna guess this one too. You know that. Jupiter. No. That is incorrect. The answer is Venus. The score remains three to one. Idiot. Ladies, it is now your turn to wait across the hall in the viewing room. All right, let's do some fashion trivia. All right, guys. Let's get to it. Brad, we will start off this last part of the elimination with a lot of catching up to do. Go ahead and choose. One. Richard and Mindy are killing it. Is, name the four-legged animals depicted in the trademarks for the following fashion lines. Lacoste, La Tigre. Alligator. Ray, and Ralph. La Tigre, I'm going to assume tiger. Lauren. Horse. A polo horse, to be specific. Alligator. Um, all I know would be the tiger for the second one. The other Good. two. Good. LT, uh, Gray Tiger. Horse and Ralph Lauren. First one, I don't know. Cost is an alligator. La Tigre is a tiger. And Ralph Lauren is the horse. The score remains three questions to one. Okay, well, dude, Richard and Mindy are staying at this point. Richard, all you have to do is get this question right, and your team stays in the house. I'll take number two. Richard, 
In the fashion label DKNY, the DK refers to what designer? DKNY? What are these old brands? Is this brand still relevant? David Klein. Sounds like a rich person name. Donkey Kong. <laughs> <laughs> Multiple people had that joke. I'm proud. I'm a proud chat dad right now. That's so many of you said Donkey Kong. Donna Care in New York. Drift King. Oh, Donna oh, Care. Come on. Devin Klein. <laughs> He's just like me. <laughs> I have no idea. That is incorrect. That Donna was Karen. wickedly close to mine. Dude, that's crazy. I'm, dude, I'm Richard. I'm Richard, man. <laughs> so the score remains three to one. Brad, you still have some life in the game, buddy. You get this wrong, you leave the house without your shot at $250,000. Oh, big. Brad, what upscale department store has the same name as a popular kid's entertainment character? Upscale apartment store? Oh, department store. Wow, I have no idea. You wanna give me an answer? I, got I said I have no idea. The correct answer is Barney's. Never must have went out. I don't I don't know what that is. Ladies, come back in. Oh, so he's out. That's it. I mean, he should have shot a guess out there. I mean, I, I know he probably would have been wrong, but uh, Door of the Explorer? I don't know. Try something. Brad and Crystal, it was a lot of fun having you here. Good luck to you guys. <laughs> hey, come here, kids. When I kissed Crystal on the lips, it was the first time I had ever kissed. Oh my God! Wait, was she? Was that inviting? Hold on. What? We got a replay on this replay. <laughs> oh no. Okay, you know I'm not Richard. I want to distance myself from what I said earlier. I'm not Richard. And then the show said, "Run that back to a little replay." When I kissed Crystal on the lips, it was the first time I had ever kissed. Yeah, this isn't. No, nah, this isn't a celebration here. I'm glad it was her lips. I definitely pat Richard on the back for having the guts to just, you know, turn me around and kiss me. I think that was, that was really, uh, you know, daring of him. And I don't think he would have done that if he wouldn't have come here. Uh, I'm sure the show told her, hey, we kind of need to wrap up his uh, character. So uh, can you just say that that was a good thing that he did? Just look at the camera and say, that was good. Congratulations, Richard and Mindy. The other teams up there were wondering, Who's gonna be walking up those stairs? Do but you know, like I'm saying guys, don't get mad at me if by next episode I forget again and I'm like, oh, Richard, this lovable little goofball, look at him go. <laughs> I'm stupid and I might. Good night guys. <laughs> I'll definitely miss Crystal. I'll, I'll definitely miss a few laughs every day, you know, since Crystal's not around. I really connected with Brad more than anyone. I feel like he's like my brother. Like I got pretty close with him. I certainly learned that you can't just immediately typecast people because there are things beneath. Whoa, dude! Brad was getting around. I still wanted to hear Brad and Scarlett's thing that was that was blossoming. Damn it! The very first day I, I had gotten here, I just thought like, oh my god, these guys are you know a bunch of like nerdy guys, and I honestly did think that. And you know, as I got to know the guys so much better, I you know fell in love with all of them in a different way. They're the best group of guys that I've ever, you know, hung around with, definitely. We even hung around my ragtag bunch of dudes. We call ourselves the boys. I roll uh, with a crew of problematic bachelors, and we call ourselves the squad. All right, episode three, huh? Good times.